Evening everybody. Carpo here. And we humans are irrational. Irrational and rational. Sensitive, emotional, wild and crazy beings. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's interesting being a human. I, I, I know that sounds cheesy, but um, there's these aha moments, you know, that we have in life. And I have them all the time, these ones about realizing, oh my god, I'm alive, you know, and it's it's an amazing experience. Um, compared to what is the question, that's why it's funny to me. You know, you can say, oh, being alive is amazing. Well, really, compared to what? I mean, <laughs> you know, not being alive. Yeah, sure. So, uh, I just dozed off for a little bit. I wasn't asleep very long, maybe 15 minutes. I really didn't even sleep, but when I woke up, I was in one of those states. It's the afternoon nap state, or the evening nap state, which is hard to explain for me, but uh, where I've been gung-ho all day and then uh, lay down and briefly doze, wake up and just have this kind of relaxed, mellow feeling. And it ties really into what I wanted to do this video about, which was like cycles of emotion and behavior. and It's uh, really to get at the heart of it, so I'm not rambling too much. I, I find it fascinating how whenever I'm really motivated to get something done, I have none of the energy to do it. I mean, I, I'm a, especially if I need to do something, like getting a job, a particular job done or something, and it's just, I'm not into it at the moment. And then another time I might have some motivation, but just not have the opportunity to use the motivation the way I want. Um, these are the issues for me, which I believe are... Uh, the cyclical feelings of the mind which are associated somehow with astrology okay and I've always been really fascinated with astrology and how it correlates with our behavioral patterns and and I think while there's some validity to it I don't believe in today's astrologers for example I wouldn't open up and read my horoscope out of the newspaper that would be ludicrous to me um, I think that uh, for a horoscope to be valid, you know, obviously it has to be tailored to the individual. And I don't understand how all that works. Uh, because it's just another aspect of that, oh, I guess some people call it occult, but I don't. Uh, I think of astrology as, um, it's not a cult, because a cult is hidden. So, you know, many of these things are out in the open for everyone, so it's not hidden from anyone. But uh, we know a lot of leaders have used astrologers. Hitler, he had one. Uh, Reagan had one, or his wife did, I believe, and um, a psychic as well. So it's not like, you know, it's not all hocus pocus. But uh, when they talk about the stars being on your side, I mean, to what degree can you find that valid? And I started learning about the conjunctions of Mercury and Venus and understanding how these different planetary alignments uh, affect us. Now Mars and Venus, the reason why you hear about those conjunctions more, it seems like, than any other is because uh, we're all within this, you know, uh, distance of the Sun where we can affect each other electrically. I don't know how all of that works either. But to me it's real. It's, it's something I feel is, uh, is valid. I just don't understand how it can be applied. But uh, anyway, the, these cycles that we have, you know, um, when they talk about Mars retrograde and that kind of stuff, you know, they, you, you'll see these shows and they'll tell you, well, you know, that during this period it's time to get these things done and out of the way. And then during this period it's time to maybe start a new project or start a new business. But only if you're of this sign and this kind of person, so on and so forth. So then you also have Chinese horoscope and, and, and the, uh, you know, I'm the year of the rabbit and, uh, you have all these different years. My wife's the year of the dragon, and we have uh, uh, different meanings behind that, which are super deep too. And so you look at the descriptions for these different astrology and uh, and and even astro theological ideas, and they're so vast. I mean, there's such a wide variety of different opinions on what they mean and how to interpret them. So one of the hardest things for me is to look at a horoscope and and see it or a let's say, a description of a particular person of, uh, uh, I'm a Sagittarius, and it may have a description of a Sagittarius that's completely off from another one. And it leads me to wonder, where are these people getting their ideas compared to where these people are? But uh, 
Anyway, it's uh, I'm always reminded of that when I go through these cycles, because like right now I need I have certain things I need to do in my life, but I need the motivation and energy to do that. Sometimes I'm just like feeling great and good in spirits, and I and I and sometimes I'm just kind of about average, you know. I try not to ever get depressed. I never let myself get to the point where I'm, you know. But I do drag ass sometimes. We all do. And uh, I guess my my only point here is that you know I'd like to I, I wish I knew how to tie these things together to understand how to utilize these periods to the best and the maximum to say okay this is a period to get stuff done for me so I'm going to start getting stuff done but my thought is if I know that already aren't I affecting the outcome by assuming that I'm in a particular thought pattern. In other words, instead of letting nature take the pattern, I start to try to dictate the pattern to myself. And it gets into all kinds of weird stuff. Anyway, I'll leave it at that because you know, I end up rambling on it. But uh, the cycles are really cool because, you know, I I just know my that when, when I come back around to these cycles that I need, then I'll have them. So where today isn't going to last forever, you know. And... Uh, Neither will tomorrow. So, peace.